Welcome to another round of the BRCC Mazda MX-5 Championship. This weekend we're in the coastal views of Anglesey Circuit. One of the drivers' favourites, but not so much today when we had absolute downpour for the first qualifying. Now race 1A is about to get underway, as you can see the guys are going out to the track. Good news is it is starting to dry out out there. Now we have John Langridge and Will Blackwell Chambers drawing on points coming into this weekend. So Andy, I'm going to give you a question. Who's going to walk away with a better advantage now that the track is drying out? Let's see. So straight over to you, Andy, to run us through all of that grid. Well, Lindsay, I think the answer is we don't really know. This will be the first wet race of the year, but Blackwell Chambers does have the pole position with Adam Bessel alongside him. Steve Foden and John Langridge share the second row ahead of Ali Bray and Ollie Allwood with Joe Wiggin and Lewis Cannon row four. Now, back on the fifth row, Marcus Bailey and Ben Short, twice a winner this year, but down in 10th on the grid ahead of Jason Greytrex and Matt Pollard. Charles Mugglestone, Jack Brewer, Jack Moody and Scott Mansell are next. Then David Waters and Seb Fisher ahead of Ollie Graham and Richard Baxter to round out the top 20. Then it's Charlie Rawls and Callum Greytrex. Martin Tolley down in 23rd alongside Adam Craig. Those two should move forward. Tom Smith, Tim Dore, Nick Ledoyan and Dave Turton round out the 30 or the 28 car grid for this race 1A here at a not so sunny Anglesey in the north of Wales. The red lights go on. They go out now. We're away and racing the white and blue car of Adam Bessel from the outside of row one, scrabbling for grip on what could be the drier line of the two. But on the inside line, it's the poles that are Blackwell Chambers who will lead them into target for the first time. There is Ollie Allwood, the blue and white number 63. The pink and black is Joe Wiggins stuck in the middle there with Steve Foden, the black and gold car just in front of him board with Charles Mugglestone then as we turn through the banking for the first time. A couple of cars getting sideways and Charles Mugglestone likewise but I think with some assistance there he's off the road he's on the grass and he's going to rejoin but a long way down the order. Not entirely sure who were the uh, culprit was there but there was definite contact as they went through that uh, tight banked right hander on board here with Mugglestone as a replay and yeah just a bit of contact did a good job actually to save the car but then overcorrected and straight across onto the grass on the other side of the road so uh, problems there for Mugglestone, he drops right to the back of the field and that means that he is now unfortunately vulnerable for potentially falling into one of those relegation spots. Remember the bottom five finishers in this race get relegated to the B group for race two tomorrow morning. Up the school straight they go then towards the Rocket Complex for the first time. Steve Foden there having a go at the inside of Ali Bray in the number 80 car. Ali making his first appearance of the season uh, in 2019 and has the inside line for the second part of Rocket though and will hang on to the position as we come around now towards the completion of the opening lap of racing and things as close as you would expect them despite the slightly greasy conditions the field is still extremely closely bunched on board with Martin Tolley here number 93 just behind him there uh, means that he has gained a few places because Jack Brewer started 14th and Martin Tolley started 23rd I think in fairness, Brewer has lost some ground and Tolly's gained some positions and they've sort of met in the middle and now Tolly potentially about to lose another position to Brewer as they go into the corkscrew there. The left-hander at the corkscrew are on the full circuit here this afternoon as well. So we go down the straight towards the uh, hairpin and the Tom Price straight this is and into the hairpin, another definite overtaking opportunity this. And we're seeing a few of them trying to uh, take good, make good use of that already. David Waters there, the blue number 666 car going up the inside at the front of the field though it's another blue car that of Will Blackwell Chambers the reigning champion who leads the way but he runs very wide through the final corner and Adam Bessel closes right onto his rear bumper language is there in third position and uh, fourth position not entirely sure who that was uh, oh it's the number eight it's Lewis Cannon in fourth place he's had a really good start from eighth on the grid so we're on board with language now three times a race winner this season including two wins last time we were in Wales at Pembroke that was a very different circuit down in the south of the country. Now we're on the island of Anglesey, this very, very flowing and technically demanding circuit that, as Lindsay was saying, the drivers do enjoy. It's beautiful scenery here as well, but the drivers don't really get much opportunity to enjoy that. Down the school straight they go then. Blackwell Chambers now starting to make good his escape slightly out in front. Adam Bessel could be on here though still for his best finish of the year. Not yet been on the podium uh, in an A race at least as Adam Bessel. Langridge there in third. Still going with him very much and taking with him Lewis Cannon. And Lewis Cannon likewise uh, has not been competing in these A races all year long. He was at Brands Hatch, a sort of fairly solid midfield runner in the A groups. And then didn't race at Pembrey. Last time out though, he was looking fairly rapid in fairness at uh, Cadwell Park, wasn't he? Had uh, a non-finish in the first race, unfortunately. That put him down in the B group for race two. 
but then he fought back from the back of the grid in race three to finish sixth. So Lewis Cannon definitely has good speed. And there he is, the car at the back of this little trio, fighting for second position, Bessel and Langridge in front of him. And behind him, Steve Foden was having a move up the inside of Ali Bray there for fifth position. I think he made it stick as well. Yes, he did. And in fact, he's taken with him. That, that's Ben Short by the looks of it, isn't it? The white and red car. So Ben Short, who really did need to make ground here from 10th on the grid, is now into sixth position. He's defending that sixth place down towards the final corner, but he will be able to fend off Ali Bray, I think. As the drivers search around for grip now on this very greasy circuit still. Langridge didn't get a great exit from the final corner there. And so Adam Bessel has pulled away from him. Lewis Cannon has arrived on his tail. There is number 71, Ben Short, then ahead of Ali Bray. Not sure why Ben was so far down the order in qualifying. That was very unlike him, but he does often race better than he qualifies, in fairness, and he's showing that performance again now. Gaining four places from where he started. Bray behind him. Then it's Jason Greytrex, who went so well down at Pembray, the last Welsh round that we had. Getting himself on the podium in the first race, and he was never out of the top four all weekend solidly inside the top 10 again here in Anglesey. And then Marcus Bailey, that is behind him. Here comes Greytrex. In fact, he's pulling alongside Ali Bray now. To the right-hand side of the road, gives him the inside line through the two right-hand kinks of the school straight. And then hard on the brakes. He'd already made the move stick before they turned left at Rocket. So Greytrex up a position. Ali Bray, unfortunately, after a really good qualified performance, very impressive fifth position on his first appearance of the year. The AV Motorsport machine just starting to slip down the order ever so slightly now. I reckon he'll be able to fight back though as the race goes on. The decent racer is um, Ali Bray and he is bound to be a regular feature in the top 10 all weekend long, I would say. And with Langridge, this yo-yoing gap between himself and Adam Bessel is now coming down again slightly on this lap. Seems to ebb and flow corner by corner though, doesn't it? So through certain sections of the circuit, Bessel has had an advantage thus far. One of the places where he does seem to be strong is this next corner, the final left-hander onto the pit straight. So let's see whether or not he's going to be able to take advantage of that again. <laughs> Through the left-hander they go. And back down the uh, the pit straight. Big gap there you can see just behind the number 72 car there, which is uh, Scott Mansell from 16th on the grid. Back to the next train of cars being led by Adam Craig, who started 24th. There he is, the yellow number 29 car. Adam Craig really has gained some, some uh, ground in this race. And that's impressive stuff from Adam, who, again, has been there or thereabouts all year, yet to trouble the top five, but uh, he's had a fairly consistent season. Jack Brewer there, and just behind, onto the grass goes number 24, the blue car of Oliver Graham. It's not a place you want to be dipping a wheel onto the green stuff. Very easy to uh, lose control, especially when that grass is damp. You find yourself in a very high-speed meeting with the barriers, but uh, gathered it together as well. Everyone driving well in this race so far. There's number 61 going through, and that's Richard Baxter. All of these drivers trying to get as far up the order as possible, not only to score good championship points, but also to stay away from those relegation positions, which are so crucial. If you end up in the B race at any point, it severely affects the rest of your weekend. And Adam Craig there gets a bit sideways. Ollie Allwood, the white and blue number 64, 63 car, excuse me, trying to take advantage of that, but not able to do it through uh, Rocket towards the very tricky right-hander of Peel. Cars go light there over what is quite a significant crest just on the exit, and then they plunge down towards the corkscrew, where on the coastal circuit, we turn left here, and then immediately right, just down there, to the end of the lap. But uh, as I said, we get this extra bit of uh, circuit to play with this weekend, and Ollie Allwood may well be grateful for that, because he's uh, shaping up a move here on uh, Adam Craig into this hairpin. I think he's going to get to the inside first, but the grip in the wet is not always on the inside line. Doesn't matter though, Ollie Allwood eases his way through. Moves up one more position. Now, back at the front of the field, Will Blackwell Chambers has been reeled in once again by Adam Bessel. And similarly, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are together now. Steve Foden has caught the podium runners, and he's brought with him Ben Short. So, some nice battles developing here at the front of the field. Down to the banking they go. And Blackwell Chambers. He's not going to have this easy. If anyone expected him to run away with this one, then they've got another thing coming. Adam Bessel, though, certainly would back himself, I'm sure. He knows that he's got the pace to do well in this championship, just hasn't really had the look this year so far. Here he is now, running towards the front of the field. He's in the slipstream, going up the school straight. 
quite a blustery day today as well. So that uh, slipstream, particularly if they're driving into a headwind up that hill, which is quite often the case, will be of particular use. On board with Langridge in third, fourth place Lewis Cannon, then behind Steve Foden and Ben Short baiting fifth position. Turn left and then right through Rocket, but really, unless you're well alongside going into the braking zone in that sequence of corners, it's not really a... Uh, it's, it's a single file part of the circuit beyond that. So to Peel, you don't want to be on the outside line here. It's all about setting yourself up through this sequence of corners to get the run down to the hairpin. There's Adam Bessel. Slides his way through that left-hander and in front of him, he'll be happy to see that Will Blackwell Chambers is getting a little bit out of shape there. On board with the fourth place man now, Lewis Cannon looking back at Steve Foden. Steve has already made a couple of moves on the brakes here at the head, but he's not close enough on this occasion to do it again though. It takes a slightly tighter line, but in the end there's no real difference. And in the exit of the corner, they are pretty equal as well. So Cannon hanging on for now. That train of cars getting closer and closer though, and so too are the leading two who make their way down towards the hairpin now. Adam Bessel starting to really apply the pressure to the race leader. Oh, Langridge a bit slow off the final turn there. And this is Lewis Cannon's opportunity. Gets to the inside line down the pit straight. This is a tricky place to execute a pass though. They're going to make contact. Yes, they do. Oh, and John Langridge gets elbowed onto the grass. This is a disaster for the championship leader. John Langridge can little afford a bad result in this race. He's already, remember, had that weekend to forget at Brands Hatch where he had a retirement in the second race. And unfortunately, whilst this will not be a retirement, it will drop him well outside the top 10. And that's lots of championship points that are going begging now. And with his big rival, Blackwell Chambers, there, still out in front, that is the last thing that John Langridge needed. Lewis Cannon will argue that he was far enough up the inside that Langridge shouldn't have turned in. It's another similar situation to what we saw at Brands Hatch with uh, Langridge and Will Blackwell Chambers. Although in the end, the result's not quite as disastrous for John. He has at least been able to recover onto the circuit. Now we'll see how far up the order he can recover and how many more points he can salvage. So Lewis Cannon into third, but that is going to be a hard fourth third place because whilst he's gone through, he's not escaping from Steve Foden and Ben Short. And Ben Short will also have been fairly happy, I think, to see John Langridge getting nerfed off the road there because uh, Ben is very much a championship contender too and could also do with some good points here and to take some points out of Langridge. Now, if he can fight his way onto the podium, that would do him the world of good. So we'll keep an eye on that. The white and red car, Ben Short in fifth place. Jason Greytrex is now up to sixth. This now then, very much the fight for the bottom step of the podium. Through the hairpin they come into the second half of this race now. Leading two, getting ever further away from these two, but still not separating from each other, are they? There they go, the two blue and white cars at the front of the field. Blackwell Chambers leading, Bessel second, then Lewis Cannon, Steve Foden and Ben Short baiting third, fourth and fifth. Then it's Greytrex, and I'm looking back, I think that Langridge is about 10th place, isn't he? So he's just inside the top 10 as they come out onto the pit straight again. Across the start-finish line. Teams and family and friends watching on anxiously from the pit lane as uh, there is the grey and green car of uh, John Langridge. So, yeah, Ali Bray, I think, then will be his first rival that he comes across to try and uh, gain some uh, some more ground here. He's just in front of the 55 car there of Matt Pollard. So, not good news this for John Langridge. He needs to really try and just regain his composure. There's no sense letting the red mist descend now and make mistakes that could cost you even more points. But John is an experienced enough campaigner that he will understand that, I'm sure, whilst he's frustrated. The conversation with Will Blackwell Chambers is one to be had after the race, I think. For now, he needs to just try and keep his eyes forward. He's still got just under half the race left to go to try and regain some of this lost ground. This is an interesting battle going on further back as well. Adam Craig there, the yellow car, has got David Waters alongside him. And Waters himself coming under attack as well as they go into the uh, left-hander at Rocket. And it looks as though there were going to be plenty of uh, places shuffling around there. Back with Langridge now. He's got the two AB Motorsport cars in front of him because as well as Ali Bray, he's got number 72, uh, which was Scott Mansell there, directly in front of him. So the two teammates running together. And uh, John Langridge keen to get past the pair of them if he can. In fact, those two are going to run side by side now down the Tom Price straight towards the hairpin. So which way does Langridge go here? To the outside in front of him has gone Scott Mansell. Trying to go around Ali Bray, who's got the wetter side of the road on the inside. I think Mansell's going to go through. Yes, he does. Back though with third place, Lewis Cannon. And now in fourth position, look, is uh, Ben Short. So Short has gained a position now. 
ahead of Steve Foden. It's a short march towards the front is continuing. I don't think he's going to get into the top two unless either Blackwell Chambers or Bessel have an issue. But he could yet get second position here. Out of target they go, but Foden has other ideas. Look, he's had a better exit from the first corner and now tries to attack into the banking. Meanwhile, John Langridge and Ali Bray are getting themselves together as well. You hardly know where to look in this race. Langridge up the inside and Ali Bray did well to see that coming. Turning in then would have meant contact with a pair of them. He is still going to try and fight back on the exit of the corner, though. A wide line in gives him a tighter line and therefore a faster line off the corner. But Langridge gets to church corner first, so he is up another spot. Next of his targets being Scott Mansell in front of him in the next of the AB Motorsport cars. Scott just reaching up and uh, adjusting the rearview mirror while he looks in inside the cockpit. And Pollard also joining in the fun now. Closing in on the uh, two cars, three cars in front of him. As John Langridge now finds himself in an AB Motorsport sandwich. He needs to get out of this situation as quickly as possible. There is still time for him to gain some more positions. But he has to do this quickly. Out of the hairpin. <coughs> Into Peel Corner. He knows that he's quite a bit quicker than these drivers normally. Being faster than other cars and getting past other cars are two different things, especially on a circuit where it's not that easy to overtake. There are a couple of obvious places to pass, but because they're obvious, they're pretty obvious places to defend as well. And I'm sure that Scott Mansell will see this attack coming down to the hair, but is Langridge close enough to have a go up the inside? I don't think he is. He agrees with that as well, so takes the really wide line into the turn. Comes back to the late apex, carries good speed, which you can see quite steeply downhill again here to the final turn, as you'd expect for a coastal circuit such as Anglesey. It is very undulating. It's barely a flat surface here, but it's a nice and smooth surface, the track at least. And, uh, as I said, one of the drivers do enjoy driving. It has a bit of everything. High-speed corners, long, flat-out sections, but also some really tight technical sequences of corners. They really do test the, uh, the drivers and the cars to the absolute limit. Now, here's Lewis Cannon. Behind him, Ben Short. So Short now, for the time being, has seen off the attentions of Steve Foden. He's now started to challenge for third place, and the third place man is all out of shape and on the grass, and this is definitely Ben Short's opportunity to take advantage. Pulls to the inside, he needed no second invitation, and Ben Short goes into third position. Lewis Cannon just lost the rear of the car there, turning into church corner. Very easily done, especially since I think it was starting to rain again at that part of the track. And he is now into third position, is uh, Ben Short at the expense of the sideways Lewis Cannon now maybe has lost some of his rhythm and his composure and finds Steve Foden and Jason Greatrex breathing down his neck. So uh, despite having just fallen off the podium, his troubles are not quite over just yet. Through Peel. Back down towards the court screw again. And uh, well, Lewis Cannon still a really impressive result this that he's on for, but he would have loved to have got that first podium of the year. Had his first top six finish last time out in the final race at Cadwell Park. There's Adam Bessel. Adam Bessel, who had a bit of a trying time at uh, Cadwell, it must be said, never showed this sort of uh, front-running pace and then had a non-finish in the second race anyway to pretty much completely ruin his weekend. And so Bessel, great to see him right at the sharp end where he belongs. Second place in this one then. Ben Short now into third, but locks up the brakes going into the final corner. Oh, Lewis Cannon, though, behind him, does the same and runs out even wider. That allows Steve Foden up the inside, then across the start-finish line they go. Steve Foden looking for fourth place here. Can't quite get the overlap, I don't think, though. But he's almost into the back of Lewis as they turn through the first corner. Down towards the hairpin, Cannon will surely have to defend, and Jason Greatrex is there as well. And so the best form of defence for Steve Foden turned out to be attack. He launches an attack up the inside of Lewis Cannon at the hairpin and goes through. So Cannon, or oh, does he though? Actually, Cannon's quicker off the corner and they'll run wheel to wheel towards Church, but Cannon, who's already had a sideways moment here, a lap ago, well, you'd have thought would maybe be lacking in confidence slightly. No lack of confidence there though. He kept his foot in it and I think they were still side by side coming off the corner. I'm more with Martin Tolley here, looking back at the number 60 car, having a lazy spin at the final corner. That's Nick Ladoyan, who will now almost certainly find himself in one of the relegation positions going into the uh, the final race of the weekend, or the second race of the weekend, I should say, tomorrow. Back with Foden then. So Foden did get past Lewis Cannon in the end, despite Lewis's attempts to hang tough around the outside at Church. So can Lewis now hang on to a top four position? Anywhere in the top five would do in a way, though, because that would still be his best finish in 
of the season so far, and I think probably of his MX5 racing career, at least for this championship. Out of the left hand and down towards the hairpin, they go short, getting away now in third position. Vote fourth, fifth cannon, sixth grey tracks there, the three cars in shot. Anyone late enough on the brakes to go up the inside? Not on this occasion. Cannon maybe have the better mid-corner speed there. It gets a bit sideways on the exit, though, and is that going to be Greytrax's opportunity, maybe? Out of the final corner, meanwhile, there goes Joe Wiggin. Now, Joe Wiggin is about to go a lap down, which means that he must have had a moment somewhere or a problem. And for the first time this year, it looks as though Joe Wiggin is going to fall into a relegation position. He's been in the A races in every one of the nine races so far this year, and there are relatively few drivers who can lay claim to that sort of statistic, but they can see the a glimpse of the pink and black car just in front of Will Blackwell Chambers, the race leader. So he won't quite go a lap down because we're on the final lap of the race and Wiggin does seem to be running at speed. Which does therefore suggest to me that it is a spin that he's had or an off rather than a, a mechanical issue that's slowing him down greatly because his lap times are still pretty good. Blackwell Chambers is going even quicker. And it's looking now like he's going to take his fourth victory of the year. Now he and Langridge, we mentioned before the race started, how close they were on points, while well, they were also equal on race victories. Three apiece coming into this race in the 2019 season. And with this victory, Blackwell Chambers will break the tie and go one ahead of anybody else. And with Langridge some way down the order, it looks as though John is going to do well, I think, to uh, salvage anything better than about an eighth position finish. So it's a good championship points, and there's a good opportunity here maybe for the... Uh, blue and white number one machine to take more than one race victory this weekend you'd have to imagine this is the weekend that marks the halfway point of the championship and could this be the weekend where Blackwell Chambers starts to solidly make his mark on the championship out of the hairpin one more corner to go there you get a good shot of Joe Wigan coming down towards us with one of the headlights sticking out which is usually a sign that he's had some contact or a spin somewhere so he's definitely had an eventful race there's a wing mirror hanging loose too but no such problems for Will Blackwell Chambers who for the fourth time in 2019 comes out of the final corner and wins in the BRSCC Master MX5 Championship a great victory that was for Blackwell Chambers had to withstand the pressure early doors from Adam Bessel but in the end pulled away Bessel still very happy though with his first podium finish of the season and then third place will be Ben Shaw. Not a bad result that from 10th on the grid. Confirmation of that result then, a 3.8 second winning margin in the end for Blackwell Chambers over Bessel and Short in third. Steve Foden fourth, Lewis Cannon fifth, fended off Jason Gray Trek to the flag. Then Marcus Bailey and John Langridge indeed down in eighth ahead of Scott Mansell and Matt Pollard. On the Allwood, Jack Brewer, Ali Bray dropped down to 13th in the closing stages. Then Seb Fisher and Adam Craig to round out the top 15. The five drivers that will be relegated, Martin Tolley, Tim Dorr, Nick Ledoyan, Joe Wiggin, and Charles Mugglestone. Will, congratulations. First place in the first race this weekend. Talk me through what you set up like, because it looks like it was drying out out there. Um, we weren't really sure what it was going to do. We had a fantastic wet setup, which we somewhat lucked upon, which put me on pole, which was a great place to start from. Um, it looked like it was going to dry, so we kind of went for a 50-50 wet-dry setup. And I must admit, having rolled onto the grid, I took one look at my teammate, and we both went, this is not going to go well. Um, went all right. Standing top up top step of the podium, pretty happy with that. Adam started second, finished second. Still happy? Yeah, very happy. I think I could have took it to Will at the beginning, but um, we had a gentleman's agreement, but because we're teammates, to, uh, if whoever's in front, then we just push on till near the end, and then we'll have a fire at the end. What sort of setup were you running there? Um, more to dry, but just a tiny bit off of the dry setup, really. Ben, talk us through that amazing race. Uh, well, uh, qualifying didn't go very well, so we were all the way back in 10th um, and I uh, ignored the advice of my uh, my team and chose to go for a wet setup. So uh, it was brilliant for the first two laps and then after that really we were we were on the back foot a little bit. But um, due to other people making some mistakes, which is sort of Mazda racing, isn't it, managed to claw our way up onto the podium. 